Hi everybody, it's Crystal and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing the second video in the um, Five Book Friday series that I'm starting, which covers the next five books that I have read this year. Uh, if you haven't seen my first video, I'll link it so you guys can see that. And so without further ado, let's get started. The first book that I read was The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. And this is an 18th century novel that follows a man named Henry Montague, but he's known as Monty. And he is the son of a very large political figure in um, the city. And it follows him as he's going around this long adventure around um, Europe with his best friend Percy, whom he has a very large crush on, and his sister, and um, Monty's sister. And they get into a whole bunch of trouble and they have to figure everything out on their own and it's kind of like them being tossed into the real, real world for the first time. And this book has a ton of hype behind it, and so I went into it thinking it was going to totally blow my mind. And unfortunately, I felt a little bit <laughs> with it. I just, I felt like the hype kind of was too hyped, at least in my opinion. Um, I feel like the story was very well paced. I felt like a lot of things happened um, and it was entertaining but I feel like a lot of it was happenstance. Like they just happened to do this, which led to this huge conflict. And then they happened to do this, which led them to a, a result and a resolution. And it just, it didn't seem like they were using their brains as much as I wanted them to. And it just kind of seemed they're like, well, let's just flounder for a minute. We'll figure it out. And I understand that could be a, a very real part in life, but I just, I didn't buy into it. And maybe the second book will be better, but this one I just felt like meh. And I feel like um, the love story was a little bit meh. And I wanted, I wanted more character development and I wanted more, just a little bit more with it. So I gave it three out of five stars. The second book I read was called Lucky in Love by Casey West. And this follows a girl named Maddie who falls in um, into kind of an interesting situation where she wins the lottery as a teenage girl. And it's obviously a contemporary series, and, well not series, it's just one book, but, um, and it follows her as everything changes after she wins the lottery. Like she no longer has to worry about college and like paying for college. She no longer has to worry about her dysfunctional family and, um, she no longer has to worry about um, a lot of things. But then there's other problems that come in. People start asking her for money. People start doing all of these things that have, have never even wanted to be around her. And so it's just about her sifting through all of these new changes and, and trying to come out of it unscathed. And I feel like this book had the potential to be really awesome and it just, fell a little bit flat as well. Um, I feel like the character development was really poorly done. Um, not really poorly, that's that's harsh, but just like, I felt like it could have done better. I was getting confused with who the characters were and, um, and I didn't really feel for her as much. I didn't like, oh, I, I can totally empathize, I could totally relate to this. And obviously I've never won the lottery, so I can't really empathize with her, but it would have been nice to be able to at least relate to her in some way, and I just didn't feel feel it as, as much as I wanted to. And so I ended up giving this book a three out of five, no, actually I think I ended up bumping it down to a two because I just, I wanted so much more. And being this was my first Casey West novel, I really wanted to like it, and I really was just in the mood for a fluffy, contemporary, sweet, character-driven story where I just fall in love with these characters, and instead I just, I just felt a little bit uh, flat for me. Um, the third book that I read was called Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch. I can never remember her name, ever. But it follows this girl named Lena, and Lena's mother passes away from cancer, and 
So she has to move to Italy to live with her father, whom she has never met. And it follows her through the story as she's trying to get to know her father and get to know Italy, even though she really doesn't want to. And then there's an underlying mystery that she has to kind of figure out um, in regards to her mother's past. And I just, I really liked it. I felt like it was really well done. The um, questions that she had at the beginning were answered at the end. And if that's something that's really important to me, if it's important to bring up in a book, it's important to end in the, in the book as well, or at least start to close it up. Um, and, and it was just very sweet. And it was about um, a father and daughter relationship. And it was about um, a girl learning to move on, but um, that being able to move on doesn't necessarily mean you need to forget. It just means that you need to adjust and to pivot. And I, I really enjoyed it and I gave it four out of five stars. The next book that I read was called Saints and Misfits by S. S.K. Ali, or Ali, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, but this it follows a young girl named Jana, and she is a Muslim teenager in high school, and it follows her as she's trying to navigate um, the stereotypes following her, um, and then also just sifting through like her and trying to figure out who she is. And then also trying to understand who she is as a Muslim and as a teenager and just as a girl. And, and it was um, a very cool insight into the Muslim culture, which I'm not privy to. And that's one of the reasons I picked it up because I felt like it could be very culturally authentic because the author um, is of this culture and it seemed like uh, she knew her stuff and, and it was very, eye-opening and I could see that this could be very relatable to this uh, two teenage girls of this culture um, and I would definitely recommend it to anybody that wants to open their eyes to a new culture and I gave it three out of five stars. The last book that I read was The Running Dream by Wendelin Van Drainen and it follows this girl um, named Jessica and she is a very talented runner in high school and it follows her as she goes through this tragic event and has to get part of her leg removed and it follows her as she has to heal and um, make um, improvements in her life but then also to learn to define herself like who is she now that she can't run and who and how is she going to accept her disability? How is she going to move forward with her disability? Does she look at disability, others with disability, in a different light now? And um, this book um, had been recommended to me by somebody who um, knew I work uh, with people with disabilities. And it's usually a topic that I kind of steer clear up from in the, in the reading world unless it's very highly acclaimed because sometimes it just isn't um, a very good representation of what it is to have a disability for the most part, and this book was good. Um, I could tell that the writer had done her research. She knew what it was like for somebody who um, had a part of her leg removed, what needed to happen, what type of surgery was going to happen, what type of therapy was going to happen, now, the way that this um, author approached people with other disabilities, it started um, near the very end of the book where the main character meets another girl who has, a dis has another disability, a different disability than her, and they kind of form this bond. I wish that bond would have been one of the main focuses of the book because it was at the very end when it just was kind of pushed in there and it, it, it felt a little bit forced, kind of like, oh, I'm missing an element, let's put in other disabilities in here and use this as an element in my story. And, and I could tell, you know, and I wish, I wish it would have been executed a little bit better. Now, I gave this book three out of five stars. I definitely recommend it if you haven't read a book about somebody who has um, had part of an, a leg removed. I feel like it's very informational and 
um, you can relate to her in a lot of ways and um, start to learn about those who have disabilities within the high school settings or within any setting really and thank you so much for staying to the end of the video hopefully you guys stick around i will be doing the next um five book friday within like the next couple of months or something it's definitely not going to be something that happens every week because or every month because i don't read um enough to really warrant a monthly wrap up that's why i do the five book fridays and it will probably be roughly quarterly um just depending on how well how much time i have to read hopefully you enjoyed this and i will see you guys next time bye